All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talking with Tarashuk Podcast. My name is Will Tarashuk, the man in the chair, T is in Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. A big thank you to my guest last week, Mr. John Cooper from uh, CounterPoints Politics on TikTok. Me and him, man, that was a good convo. I could have kept going and going, but hey, man, the clock got to run out sometime. But this week, another man I can keep going and going with is a man by the name of Ryan Sullivan. He is the founder of Podcast Principles. Actually, fun fact, Ryan and I did a podcast on the Ambiguous Podcast Solution talking all about his podcast, the Bopcast, about two years ago, probably... Roughly around this time, maybe, I don't know, it sounds good for the story, but today we are back, we're going to talk more podcasting, his business, social media, because Ryan, my main follow you on LinkedIn, um, I know you best mm-hmm. from LinkedIn, to be honest, because you're there every mm-hmm. single day, all the time, and I see your posts consistently, so you're probably the most common person in my LinkedIn feed, congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate that, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see, we'll probably touch on it today, maybe a little bit, we'll see where we go. Excellent, so this kick us, kick us off, you know, reintroduce yourself to yeah. my audience, people who just don't know Talking With Tarish, I can know who you are, please, with all, by all means. <laughs> Yeah, so if you, I mean, if you want to go by titles, um, yeah, founder of Podcast Principles. I started a podcast production company out of my garage. I started editing up people's audio, and then it kind of moved on from there. And um, yeah, it's evolved over time. I mean, it's it's uh, you know at this point, it's really a podcast production company on one side and a podcast coaching company on the other. Um, and I have a partner that that helped me with that. Um, and then yeah, man, I'm a rapper, producer, podcaster, uh, basically like full time content creator at this point. You mentioned LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn allowed me to, I guess, technically be a full time content creator because I spend most of my time sitting on there right before this I was on there for a half an hour just answering DMs so it's just yeah it's kind of taken over my life but yeah I mean I just do what I want to do man I I just uh, I have a podcast where I interview people who who do the same thing and my mission has just been to figure out a way to you know do what I want to do uh, for a living and at the same time you know serve people and help people out so that's the general gist. Yeah, I'm sure you've practiced and rehearsed that a lot. Uh, I always forget you're younger than me, right? I'm 28. You're what, 24, 25? Yeah, 24, yep. Yeah, that's that's always a, that's always like a reality check for me. It's like, damn, man. Come <laughs> well, on, well, I actually, together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, dude, I talk to like 21-year-olds, and I'm like, oh, now I feel like that yeah. guy, you know? So, you know, it, when you're 21, you look at a 16-year-old, like, they don't know what the hell they're doing, you know? So, yeah. yeah, it's a matter of perspective, man. I mean, I've been asked on, you know, I was on, like, some radio show, and the guy was like, do you feel 24? I'm like, I feel, like, men's, I feel like I'm – feel like I woke up, you know, I feel like I woke up really, really early where, you know, I, I have, I've listened to the Tim Ferriss and, you know, Joe Rogan forever, obviously that's implied, but, you know, down to all the personal development, self-development, uh, I've, I've gone through like basically a midlife crisis at like 24, I felt, um, and maybe there, there's definitely another one that's going to happen, uh, then, but I do feel like I've just accelerated in terms of personally, because that's what I tried to do. You know, that's what I wanted to do. I, at first I wasn't consciously doing it. Then I was consciously doing it once I realized that, oh shit, you have to do the same thing every day. I'm like, how do I like be able to sit on line all day and make money. Right. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of, you know, that's how, that's how my life's evolved. I don't feel, I mean, I feel, I feel great. I mean, I feel 24 in some ways, uh, you know, it depends on the day, but, uh, but yeah, 28, 28 gets better. Uh, the, uh, 24, I'm not gonna say I was miserable, but let's see 24. I was, I think I was unemployed that year. See 95. Yeah, I was. That was what twenty nineteen. I was twenty four, give or take. So, that was that was not easy. But uh, it gets it gets easier with age. And you're you're, yeah. you're, you're I feel like you are leagues ahead of me. Um, but oh, I wouldn't say that. I but. mean, in terms in terms of like this straight podcasting and what you do, because you're kind of the complete package. And again, I'm over here alone, right? I do all this mm-hmm. shit by myself, and it's with that full time job, which yep. I adore and don't want to leave. Whereas you went full blown to this full time. Um, when, when did you go full time and when did you know, okay, I can do this full time? When was that moment for you? Well, it depends how much time we have, but I, there's a couple stories embedded in this, but yeah, I mean, so in 2019, I met Gary V November, 2019, I went to a meet and greet where he was just, he was just doing a meet and greet at his dad's liquor store in Jersey. And so I pulled up with my friend and he invited me and we met him. And so I asked him a question about artists that wasn't even related to entrepreneurship or wasn't related to business, but I had been watching him for so long. And I realized that I was, I had never really applied a concept that I learned from him. Right. And so after I met him, I kind of like thought that in the back of my head a little bit. Right. I'm like, 
I'm like 21 maybe or whatever, you know, I'm like not really just, I, I just had a small realization. And then I was working for a company and, you know, we can go more into, into that particular company, but you know, really long story short with the company, uh, was I applied for a freelance, for freelance jobs in probably 2018, 2019, um, after in, inviting somebody on my podcast who made six figures on the stock market in a year from, uh, you know, from stock market. And then I invited another guy on who made six figures social, doing social media management. So then at that point I was like, okay, I have two case studies of two people who left their jobs to go online to do, figure it out. Right. So I tried it and I made $80 in three months and I was like, okay, well, it's 80 bucks. I mean, I guess let's try to make another 80, gotta, right? Gotta so, start somewhere. Yeah, you gotta, gotta start, start somewhere. somewhere. So I'm applying for jobs on Upwork, and the only skill I have is like audio editing. Audio editing better than the average person. I wasn't yeah. good. I wasn't what I am now, and, and I have editors that are way better than me now. But, you know, that's what I was trying to do because I realized that social media management was so flooded, right? Anybody can post your post on Instagram for you, right? Mm -hmm. But not everybody can edit your podcast. So I've come across this job post, right? And this this company, um, typically on Upwork and these freelance sites, they don't put the name of the company because they don't want to get spammed by people. But in this one, they had the name of the company. I ran out of credits. I only made 80 bucks. I didn't even really have the 20 bucks for the credits. And because I'm living off of savings at this time. So, you know, I said, you know, I'm just going to reach out to this company. I'm going to try to find a contact and see if I can get a hold of them because they need somebody to edit their podcast. So I went to the site. I booked a call. To book a call, you had to be a company. Like you have to list your company name. So I just listed my YouTube channel. I'm like, here's my YouTube channel. Here's my stats, whatever. I want a marketing help. So the guy that on the other end thought that was cool. He had never talked to a YouTube channel before that booked the call with him. So he got on the call with me and he was kind of curious about me, but I just laid it out for him. I was like, hey man, listen, I kind of like, I'm not supposed to be on this call. I saw your ad on Upwork. I, I just want to edit your podcast. I don't care how much you're going to pay me, whatever. He said, hey, I really like your approach. Why don't you come in, in the city in New York and why don't you do an interview? I'm like, okay, great. That's amazing. This is amazing, right? I'm driving to the interview. I'm, I'm on the bus and I go, why am I doing an interview? I'm editing this guy's podcast, dude. Like, I didn't even know what the interview was for. <laughs> like, he, asked, he asked me to do the interview. I said yes, but I never asked him what I was getting interviewed for. Because if I was going to edit your audio, dude, why are you going to have me drive three hours round trip to do this interview? So I get to the place. I'm there, you know, hit him up. He comes down. It's like a co-working space in New York, this cool little fancy thing. And I'm there and he's sitting there and he's like literally on his like phone the whole time. Like he's just like barely paying attention. Right. So, so, um, you know, but we're, we're talking, we're chopping it up. And he says to me, he's like, Hey, I had you come here because I want you to do everything. I want you to host it, produce it, edit it, you know, market it, direct it, uh, you know, distribute it, you know, anything, do the whole podcast basically. Right. Because this founder of this company was a guy, which I didn't know. Right. But he was a guy who really just loved the idea of it. Like he, he would just spam people and that's how he would find clients. And then he would take their money and then end the contract and he would go to the next one. Like he never delivered results. It was like a whole sheet sham of a company that I didn't know. Right. So this is the best opportunity of my goddamn life, dude. So I'm like, let's go. Cause I was a mechanic, right? Like I was a landscaper mechanic. I was doing all this stuff. I was doing my podcast at night. He thought it was cool that I had a podcast. So he figured this guy can host it. Shit. I'm just going to pay this kid 15 bucks an hour. He literally asked me, I was getting paid 15 bucks an hour to fix cars. And he was like, how much do you want for this? I'm like 15 bucks an hour. He's like, deal. So now I'm making the same money that should've I was making. Should have said 20, man. Fuck yeah. I should have said 20. should have said 30. I should have said a hundred. Dude, I should have said 150, right? So, no. But I didn't know what I didn't know. So hey, Rob Deerdeck, Rob Deerdeck, Rob Deerdeck told me you don't know what you don't know until you know you don't know it, right? So until you're... Pat, right? Rob Deerdeck's a genius, bro. That's another story that I could go into. But I know you did. Yeah, I know you yeah, interviewed yeah. Uh, Rob he, Deerdeck. Yeah, he's amazing, dude. But, um, but yeah, so I, you know, I land this job, man. And, um, so I was at that company for probably like a couple of years and this was during college. So I could go into any of the avenues within like the company, whether it's the founder doing, you know, cocaine under his desk or, you know, him scamming the customers or cold sending out 3000 cold emails a week, like whatever it ends up being. Um, but he put me on sales. He took me off the podcast, said it wasn't working you know, wasn't working, even though we never kind of like didn't do anything. We did like 20 episodes. I'm like, come on, my man. Um, so yeah. So he, one day I'm like working for him in the city and I, you know, I'm about to wrap up this story though. So 
I'm working in the city because it's winter break from school. So he's like, why don't you come in? It's a three hour round trip commute. I'm like, this is brutal, right? I'm like, I'm like three weeks into this, dude. It's like five days a week in the city and three hours round trip. I'm working, you know, I'm getting there before him. I'm working like 8 a.m. to like 8 p.m. It's brutal. And so I like slept in one day, dude. I was like, I just can't do this anymore. Like, I just have to like get my recovery. I literally had no life. I got home, made my breakfast for the next day, went to sleep and woke up again. That was my life. Um, and so I would see these like zombie people on the bus who would do, who would do this every day. And I'm like, this ain't it. So he pays me for me to talk to his life coach, his personal life coach, because he's like, you should get your shit together. So I talked to the life coach, this guy named Tim. Tim says, Hey man, by the end of the, by the end of call, Tim's like, Hey man, I think you should do music and podcasts. Cause that seems like what you're into, like on your own. He's like, you're 20, 21. He's like, you don't need to work at this company. <laughs> So the company paid for me to talk to the CEO's life coach who suggested that I quit the job at the company that paid for the call, which was wild, man. So I just took this guy's advice, um, you know, just basically just stars aligned. The com- I just left in probably February 2020 and I had an idea. My idea was let me start a podcast production company. So in March of 2020, I started a podcast production company and two weeks later, pandemic hit, my school shuts down. And I spent the next six months for four hours to six hours a day sitting on LinkedIn, building my company, basically. So that's how it started. God, that really is. That's, you know, I, I kind of did the same thing. Um, we started in like, we, we were going to get, get going, get going. Like we did all the paperwork in May, 2019. Um, by the time but February hit, like my buddy moved up from Nashville, we had like, we worked with the chamber of commerce, going to do their production, going to have co- nice. a contract ready to go. Mm-hmm. And then bam, Pandy hit and yep, yep. it was just over. And it's like, okay, what can I do? Let me just go back to center. Keep doing podcasting. Podcasting has always been my center. When I yep. don't know what to do, I hop on a podcast. That's why mm-hmm. I even talked to you a few weeks ago. It's like, I was kind of stuck in a crossroads. Like, what do I do? Let me reach out to someone I know I can trust. And let me just do keep doing podcasts. Just keep scheduling a podcast. And eventually it'll work out. And I don't know who said this. I, don't know, I could have just made this up, but like, how do you be successful? You do a lot of work for free first. And yep. sometimes that free work can take years mm-hmm. and you found it. It clicked, but you, you mm-hmm. told me podcast principles isn't actually technically legally formed as a business. You do all the contract work. Yeah, I, I do the whole, I run the whole business contract um, because. Yeah. Why I, break that down for me? Yeah. Cause like as an actual business, it's just you're in New Jersey. It's like 200 bucks for the year for the filing. And then like the, the, um, actual, uh, wow. annual report. Mm-hmm. Why not do it in an actual business? You're successful enough. You can have a bunch of tax write-offs. I write off my put on my rent under a business. Oh, I, business I get rent. the same write-offs you get. Okay. So uh, yeah. So, so why why yeah. why why go with the contract route instead of forming an actual business? Well, I would say so first, it. it's easier to pay myself, so it's way less paperwork, paperwork to do that. Mm. Um, yeah, I get the same uh, write-off. I get the same write-offs and tax benefits up to a certain income amount. So it actually doesn't. It's neither here nor there for LLC up until you hit like probably six figures or multiple six figures. Now it's going to make more sense to do that. Um, dude, my revenue was like five thousand six. I think it was eight thousand the first year, twelve thousand the next year, third, maybe forty thousand the next year. Right. So it was like. Yeah. I don't need a fucking LLC. Like, I'm just trying to see if this is going to work. My accountant was like, don't worry about it. I think that, and that's an opinion that I had, by the way. Like, Mm. I think a lot of people start LLCs and they go nowhere because they thought that it was starting an LLC. That was the thing you needed to do. All I needed to get was a customer. I don't, I'll figure out the tax shit later. Like my taxes are dialed. Like everything's good. I got a good accountant. We're all good. But like, I don't, if you there's benefits to LLCs that accountants can go into, and that's not my area of expertise, but I've been good. I pay my taxes and I'm all set. So like now, you know, this year slash probably into next year, the business is doing its thing. Like it's going to make sense to start a real entity, but to be completely honest with you, I didn't know how well or, and, or if it was even going to work. So I wasn't going to like, it was just a decision that I made. Like if I would have made an LLC, nothing would have been different right now. Right. So, um, it would just, I would just still be doing what I'm doing. Right. So it's just a decision that I made. Um, but I think a lot of people overhype the LLC where it's like, dude, like, like my buddy went from a videographer freelance to LLC. Like it's 
things are, there's a lot more things you have to consider. Um, and I don't really know what those things are, but <laughs> I know they're there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just the decision that I made. It wasn't like a strategic decision or anything like that. It just kind of happened. Like, and now this year I'll be like, my account will be like, Hey, we should probably, you know, probably do that. I think that makes a lot of sense though. Honestly, because look, looking back, you know, I've had this LLC for Willie, even Willie T Productions. I've had that for a few years, and like a lot, a lot of the time, it's kind of sat there as part of the biggest podcast solutions. You know, mm -hmm. all the money I made went towards APS, which was the partnership. And now it's like, okay, let me just let me kind of cut that off. The money I'm making through production, which is my arm of the business, go yep. into Willie T Productions and build that business. So yeah, it is an LLC. Currently making about three hundred dollars, three, three between three and five hundred dollars a month, which is great. Expenses yep. is maybe a hundred bucks, so all that money yeah. is just sitting there to be used. But yeah, and I still to, to have your point though. Yeah. It's, it, it, it makes yeah. not much of a difference. No, and I still have a business. Like, hey, you want to get into business credit and stuff like that, which I'm yeah. getting into now. Like, yeah, like I'm gonna have to get legit, you know, or whatever. But I have a business debit account. I have a business debit card. Like everything's yeah. good. Tin all that shit. Like I'm fine. I'm good under the law. I'm fine. Um, but yeah, it's like a, uh, I think people like the idea of having a business. That's one thing. But it's also I also do think it's a good exercise to get LLC because you get to understand that process, right? Like I do understand the process process um you know i've helped other people you know start businesses and stuff like that so it's it's yeah i mean uh I, I think it's still a good exercise it's a good thing to have and do but it's also it's not a requirement to start and for me like i have no problem being a freelancer like to be honest with you my strategy is revolved around my name and my personal brand so podcast principles is you know a concept and and there and it is a thing right but it's like if I don't sit on LinkedIn all day, the clients don't come. And it doesn't say podcast principles at the top of my profile. It says Ryan R. Sullivan, which is my name. So, you know, it's really my name and likeness. And like, but that's part of my strategy. Like that's the brand that I'm building over the next 10 years. I don't know how, you know, people, everybody does it differently. Some people want to, you have a Sweetfish media, right? Like James Carberry who owns Sweetfish. Yeah, I know James, but people talk about Sweetfish a lot more, right? Folks are probably talking about, I would say, probably re referencing my name more than they are podcast principles because I don't advertise. I don't want to flood the market with more brand names. I want to flood the market with better ideas, right? That's my whole entire concept around what I'm doing, you know? But, oh, that's a thousand percent true. Like my, my girlfriend and I talk about my business and my podcast all the time. And whenever you come up and I always say, <laughs> Uh, I always say Ryan. I don't say podcast principles. Mm -hmm. so I say, you know, the guy I want to be like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I, say, I, I say the words. But I, but I say it specifically on LinkedIn because I say I'm a fan of you on LinkedIn. To be honest, I don't listen to your podcast. I don't consume any of your content other than LinkedIn. And you would consider, the one thing we talked about on our last podcast, you consider me a listener. Which I think is smart because I am yeah. because I listen to your stuff. Yeah, or you're an audience LinkedIn. member slash yeah, fan. I would member. say there's levels to the fan base. I mean, it's like yeah, there's like diehard fans that come to my shows that buy tickets. It's like yeah. you know that's that's a whole different person, you know. Right, but it's with with LinkedIn. Uh, your LinkedIn strategy is interesting because there's a lot of I, I call LinkedIn sometimes the fakest website on the internet uh, because <laughs> yeah. no one will ever no one ever gets like controversial. You, you'll swear every now and then. Um, but like you're, you're very authentically you on yep. LinkedIn. So how do you go, how did you create your brand identity on LinkedIn? And I'll get a little more specifics after following. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I love talking about this by the way, because this is what I do every day. Like I sell podcasting, but I build brands. I build, you know, I guess businesses through brands. Right. But I've built my own brand. So like, that's what I'm spending the most time doing, uh, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. At first it was, uh, nothing like at first it was no strategy. At first it was just, I, I, I have, I have not done this. I need to go back to my posts. Like I have not seen a post, one of my first posts ever, ever in, in the whole, in the last three years, I've never gone back to, to read them. So I need to do that. That would be a good exercise, but I didn't have a strategy. Um, I mean, in the beginning I called when I was forming the company, I called Sandy Smolens. He's the founder of Audiation, you know, uh, James, I got in contact with from Sweetfish, um, Tristan from Motion, like all of the guys who ran these companies, like I talked to all of them, they, you know, some, most of them did give me advice, you know, so I had that, um, but they weren't actually, I, I did not see many i did not see and this is important for podcasting too i did not see any creator who uh helped people start podcasts any podcast even even a creator with a podcast that i wanted to emulate so i just filled a gap that i thought i saw in the market but i didn't see that gap till later on um but to go back to your question like the initial strategy was just post right just yep. post 
And then I seriously, (laughs) until this year, I did not, I was always commenting, but on this, in this year, and we could go as deep into this as you want, but you know, all of my, you know, getting 150, 200 followers in a day consistently, like not every day, but you know, that happening all the time, getting, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand impressions on my post in a week, like all that stuff. None of that happened until this year, until like there was things that I tweaked about my strategy. Um, but I was just grinding. Like I was just literally just posting, but I made it a bare minimum. Um, I mean, dude, I could run the numbers like in 2022, I didn't, I don't think I was posting on weekends back then, but it was five days a week, every single week, guaranteed, no questions asked every single day, every day I was engaging too, like every single day, like I took days off, like I would take a day off and not schedule a post. Now I'll schedule a post if I do that. Um, But yeah, I mean, really as what I'm doing now is I'm really, I think personally finding my voice in content creation and finding my niche on LinkedIn specifically, really finding who I am. Somebody commented today and they said, I really like the tough love motivation. And like, that's me, dude. Like I am not the guy to sit there with you and be like, it's okay. It's going to be fine. Like I'm the guy to be like, dude, get up off your ass and let's do it. Like I I'm literally talking to a CEO of an 800 person company and I don't have any NDAs. So I can say this, I won't mention his name. And he's like, I don't know if my podcast idea is going to work. Right. It's like, dude, nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody needs help. CMOs, CEOs, you name it. So, and I'm, you know, I didn't see anybody doing that. I saw nobody speaking to those people or nobody telling you the realities of podcasting. They were all telling you, you know, uh, they were either too far into the numbers or they were too far into the strategy. And I like the cultural, right? I like the mix of the cultural with, um, with the stats, with the trends, you know, with the differentiator, like we're going to take a marketing podcast and flip it on his head. And instead of talking about successful campaigns, we're going to talk about the least successful campaigns and the failures or whatever. Like that's what gets me hyped up. And I just basically didn't, I literally saw people talking about one of the most creative mediums in the least creative way. And so that became kind of, I guess, part of my strategy. Yeah, it's LinkedIn's hard. Um, But I think I would have them, I think, well, personally, I have the most success on LinkedIn, YouTube, and TikTok. Those those are my three. I haven't even done TikTok yet. (laughs) That's wild to me. That's wild to me. Dude, you don't know how many people, like every single person that talks to me is like, Dude, what? <laughs> but, but here's the thing. With, with you specifically, because most of your business comes from LinkedIn, right? Yeah. LinkedIn starts 90, and, it, 90%, and, it, and, it, yeah. and it goes elsewhere. TikTok is the exact opposite. Like, I feel like you don't need a TikTok because TikTok stays in TikTok. It's a bubble on TikTok. Like, you can link out to your Instagram or your link tree. No one's going to click on it. Like, there are people out there with 3 million followers on TikTok and 200 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. No, I know. So, yep. if, like, if you don't have the resources, don't do it. You probably don't need it. But yep. when it come, my, my, my LinkedIn strategy is, yeah, it's just, it's just post. It's just post my shit out there. Like, I'm doing what you say to do. Like, mm-hmm. when, when, or people like you. I, I follow plenty of people like you post, here's what you got to do for your podcast strategy. Here's what you got to do this. And I go, great. I'm doing that um, on platforms. And yet, it's just kind of, it's kind of a crazy it's TikTok, LinkedIn, TikTok, LinkedIn thing. It's you're more successful on LinkedIn telling people what to do instead of following your own advice. Yeah, no, that's 100% true. I mean, yeah, you you are more successful like painting a picture, not of reality, right? Yeah. Like, and so that's what I try to do. You know, I try to paint that picture. And obviously, I infuse some LinkedIn positivity and some bullshit in there that, you know, I know is, you know, for the platform. I'm playing the game, right? Like, I'm not in the soccer game being pissed that it's not football. Ball, right like yeah. i know that linkedin is in tiktok but the thing about this i know i understand how perception works i know that if somebody goes to my profile or maybe five of my competitors profiles my profile if i have more engagement more followers just a bigger audience and also like the if they can read the comments right I'm just going to have a better chance of getting that deal or somebody wanting to work with me. It's not going to work for everybody, but it, that's the type of people that I'm attracting. And also I'm not working with people now for the most part that don't have some kind of audience, you know, because that's what works for me, right? Like now I've figured out how to attract those people where a lot of the other people in podcasting that there are a lot of the people that do what we do don't really have a big audience themselves. And so I'm like, I think that's fucking bullshit. I'll, you know, like, that's why I want to go build one, um, you know, uh, partially, you know, other reasons as well. But yeah, I mean, LinkedIn, the key to LinkedIn, dude, is 100 percent engagement, I would say collaborations. And then there's definitely some like dark arts of LinkedIn that I don't know about. But I mean, I've talked to Justin Welsh, you know, like we're homies. I could I think I could say like we've done, you know, a call together and stuff and we go back and forth in the messages and 
he's giving me some pointers on my approach and he's like, yeah, I'll just do what you're doing. And then he'll give me a couple tweaks, but it's not like he's giving me anything that's, you know, mind blowing. I'm going to get a hundred thousand followers in a day. You know, you don't even want that. And, and to your point about the TikTok, Yeah. If I get on TikTok, I'm creating for TikTok, and that's fine. Um, I've just dedicated myself first to LinkedIn, YouTube, second, Instagram, third, Um, you know, there's reasons why that's my split personally, but yeah, I work with people or people try to work with us and they're like, I don't have an audience. And I'm like, what's your plan? They're like, post on social media. I'm like, I can't even work with you. Like it's probably gonna be two years until I can work with you. Um, and and I'm starting to do that. It's hard to do. Right. But it's, it's, and well, I would say what I would say to them is, Hey, I have this coaching program, (laughs) you know, where we can build your audience. Don't hire a content consultant for two grand a month, hire me for 200 a month to give you all of the game that they're going to give you in one hour, you know? So instead of, you know, five calls. So yeah, man, there's a lot to it, but, uh, I love, uh, I'm very comfortable with LinkedIn now and I I feel like I'm figuring it out. I'm collaborating with more people. Um, but the thing that I'm very predisposed toward, toward to is the work itself like that sitting down and doing it every day. I have no problem doing that. Um, for me, it's really like testing new things, trying new things, trying new posts, you know, that's really what it is, but it's kind of funny. Like I understand how psychotic and crazy it is to think like, okay, you can just have you could just your whole life can revolve around LinkedIn, the job net, job search platform. Uh, yeah, it's like saying you you know, make money on like you know uh, yeah Yelp or something like that, right? It's just people can't conceptualize it. If you say I'm a TikTok influencer, they'll get it, you yeah. know. But I actually I actually kind of <laughs> kind of yeah, but people will understand it. But I actually kind of yeah, like yeah. that. I like that about LinkedIn because when I meet people in everyday life, you know, people who are engineers or construction workers or truck drivers or you know uh, sales consultants or whatever they're, they don't know what I do. Like it's impossible really for them to, you know, know because it's not a job that people, most people have. So, you know, I like that it's different. Um, but that's me. I like, you know, being different, going against the grain, you know, but that's what I'm into. Well, I, I'm, I'm trying the hardest with LinkedIn. Um, I apply out of all the social media platforms. I don't consider YouTube a social media platform. I consider YouTube content platform. Um, yeah, I, th- I want, what are I you wanna... doing though? What are you doing on LinkedIn specifically? LinkedIn. That's a great question. I, I just, well, I try and get the most engagement out of my guests, like commenting, okay. commenting or tagging my guests in the content I push and like following their stuff, commenting on their stuff. My, my dude, I would do, I would not do that. I would stop doing that immediately. If Why? I were you, if I no, wanted to, no, please, if please, I wanted to Why? grow, if I wanted to grow, this is what I would do. For you. I, so do you have, first, let me ask you one question. Do you have yes. a dedicated amount, a dedicated time every day that you go on and, and, and do those comments? That's no. every five days a week. Okay. So f- first of all, it doesn't have to be an hour, five minutes. It has to be this every single day or at least mm. like consistent. So that first now, number two, switch it. Don't make it about the guests. Tell you like, not at all. Don't make any of the posts about the guests, right? Make it about the audience, the people who are on LinkedIn, because you're feeding, trying to feed people something that they don't want to eat. So you need to feed them food that they want to eat. It's a dog. You got to give them dog food, right? It's a human. You right. can't give a human dog food. So you got to feed them something that they want to eat. How do you do that? You got to play to what they want. If it's how to grow on LinkedIn, then maybe it's that. Maybe for what, I've, what I'm trying to do, and this will be similar for your strategy, is infusing podcasts into things that they already like, right? I would take it away. Notice all you have to do is go to my last 50 posts. See how many times I promote my podcast. Probably three to five times, six times. Yes. Now when I do, I do it in a specific way with specific copy, with specific links, with specific comment below, you know, because I know that it's not, it's going to get way less engagement because it's not for LinkedIn, right? It's Mm -hmm. for something else. So if you're Mm -hmm. trying, I would do the reverse I would build on LinkedIn. I would comment on influencers posts on LinkedIn in the first hour that they post and comment something that's either contradictory or supporting them in a certain way. And I can go into that, but I would just do the complete opposite and you will get the opposite results. If you stop making it about your podcast and you make it about the audience and the people that are on LinkedIn, then they will start to fuck with you because they will realize that you're creating for them, not just trying to promote your guest. Because if I see a podcast on LinkedIn, first of all, it's very hard to gain traction with any podcast clips on LinkedIn. But number two, if you do it right, that means that the person in the clip um, first of all, it's got to be optimized for LinkedIn. It has to look like the other clips on LinkedIn. Number yep. two, it has to be something that those people on LinkedIn care about. 
or at least find interesting in one way or another. It's not, if it's about the guest or even just about the topic, right? It's, it's, that's not going to land. So it's, there's, it's a very narrow, it's not like TikTok. TikTok, you give it what it wants and it will give you what you want, right? If you say, hey, TikTok, this podcast is about guns. This podcast is about AR-16s. Every single clip is AR-16s, AR-16s, AR-16s. Then it's going to find that audience for you, right? Or it's about toilets, about plumbing. I just do plumbing videos. It's going to find it. LinkedIn is a little bit harder. LinkedIn is, there's there you have to give to get. And TikTok's not like that. They don't give a shit if you engage at all. You can just post the right videos and it'll push it out. Right. So that would, would, that's what I would do. I would just flip it all on its head, but I'm an extremist <laughs> when it comes to this. So, well, let, let me ask you this then. How, like when you're starting, you know, you feed your audience. How do you find your audience? I mean, they found me, but that's how I did it. Right. right. So, so but, but if, if you're, if you're, if you're posting things, you're, you're engaging on influencers, right? Like, like yep, and yep. that's with anything. People ask me, who's your audience? I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. Well, so I think do, with a do, podcast, do you read it's stats. Do you read impressions? Like, how do you how do you find your audience? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I never thought about it like that. Like, all I did was comment on more posts and uh, be and get a top comment. That's all I try to do. So how mm-hmm. how people find me? I don't go out. I never go out and try to get people. Even my business, one hundred percent inbound. Um, maybe I do a little bit of outbound. Even my outbound is inbound because I only, you know, message people who have connected with me. Mm-hmm. So I basically what I do is I get top comments on influencers' posts at two to 10 times per day. And that brings in, uh, you know, those comments get hundreds of thousands of impressions. And then, you know, they probably get, which I don't have stats on, I'm just guessing. Um, I have impressions from posts, but not comments. Um, But then uh, there's a trickle down effect from the comments. And then those people from those comments who resonate with the comment will go to my profile. Some of them will follow me, some of them will connect. Those people that follow and connect will then see, go on the feed and see my posts for the day. Then they'll see, because right when you connect with somebody for the first time, that's when you see the that's when you see the majority of their posts so it's going to give them three to five of my posts that and then they're going to start to be indoctrinated into how i think and like whether they actually like it or not and then they're going to engage with probably one of those posts and then now they're going to be in the system and now they're going to become an audience member that's a lot to think of man (laughs) <laughs> I know it, it wasn't, dude. This is. Back, I'm gonna listen back to that two or three times. Like, okay, what did he say? This, that, and the other. Yeah, I, it's a lot. No, and this is all in my head, dude. And now I think yeah. in LinkedIn. Now I just think in LinkedIn posts. I think in LinkedIn comments. Like, I can write you one right now because, especially you, because I this is the type of post that I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's I, I literally have a folder. First of all, I teach people how to do this, right? So mm-hmm. if you want to know how to do it, I can help you. Um, but. Uh, second of all, I have an organization system. You know, I have thousands of posts saved. I have 2000 comments saved. So when I go to a Gary V, that's why I, that's why I thrive. I give all these secrets away, dude. People will pay tens of thousands of dollars to tell people this. I just tell them. So what I do is I go on Gary V. If Gary V posts about leaderships on it's over, it's over for you because I have 12 Gary V top comments that are guaranteed to get likes because I've already posted them there before. So all I do is I copy, I paste, I change the first line boom, and boom, I post that comment and it's almost, it's 50, 50. It's, it's gambling, right? But another um, cool way to do it is I'll say for, this is a great podcast example, really niche. This will only, I'll only tell this on this show. So what this is, is what, uh, what Gary Vee will do, and I'm using him because he's a great example of an influencer that you can farm people from. And I've told him this in person, right? He loves that I do this strategy. So what I'll do is he will release a podcast episode, okay? I will open it in the YouTube window and I will use a summarizer tool, a Google Chrome extension that will summarize that YouTube episode. I will copy that, paste it, put it in the comment section. Now I'll build a comment and I'll say, hey, did you not have time to to watch this episode? Here's the three takeaways with quotes. And I will spend eight minutes creating one comment that has the most valuable comment that you've ever seen in your life. And then I'll click post and right. So I'm not just, it's not just strategy. I'm doing things that nobody else is doing. And that's why I'm getting these results. People, there's other people on LinkedIn who get way more results than me, right? So I'm just one person in the spectrum of this whole thing. But that's just one example of, you know, I I think outside the box, dude. Like I'm not trying to toot my own horn. Like it's just the truth. Nobody else is out there summarizing Gary Vee's episode in eight minutes. I'm doing it faster than his team can do it, right? So it's just, who's doing it, (laughs) right? 
God damn, man. I don't know how you <laughs> eat, sleep. All you do is full time. So like, I'm just trying to think, how could I do this? Yeah, <laughs> that's hard. Just, no, I'm I mean, because like, cause you, yeah. you have a whole team around you, right? You, you have a whole team. So you do you do all your editing too, or do you pass off your editing to other people? I mean, I could go through the whole thing. So yeah, so for the podcast, right? Let's use that for an yeah. example. So I have, an, I have a producer, multiple producers that'll help. You know, I pay them a little bit. They'll come and sit and, you know, do switch the scenes for the guest and myself. Um, I've, you know, some of them are videographers, so they help me with different cameras and stuff. Um, so that's the lot, that's the live in-person part of it or the in-person part, um, post-production. Uh, like I said, the scenes are switched. So basically what that means for people who don't know is, um, you know, I have somebody, it's like TV, right? When you're watching a baseball game, they're going to switch from one camera angle to the other camera angle. I have somebody that does that for my podcast in person. So when I get the final version of it, it, all I have to do is add the intro and the outro and I'll do that myself, right? Like I pride myself in getting better at that and learning that, learning the video editing, learning to choose the right moment, right? Um, so I'll do that myself. Um, I was doing thumbnails. I pried on 50 of them. I found a really great designer and now I have him. I think he's better than me. The stats show it. So I hire him. So he does the thumbnails. Um, and then, yeah, then the audio, I have an audio engineer that's better than me. So he'll do the audio. Um, and then my uh, partner, he writes my show notes. Uh, he does a really great time stamp to breakdown um that we can you know start to optimize for youtube right um so he'll do the show notes and then yeah so we have the team working on it and that's kind of how we do my podcast but in terms of linkedin every post almost every post you see i'd say 75 percent, i do in the 30 minutes before i post it every day so I create new content almost every day, even if I don't need to. I have years worth of posts, um, but I just, I love that. I love that little hit, that like pressure of like 30 minutes. I have 30 minutes to write this LinkedIn post, right? Um, I could go real deep on my morning routine, on my life coach, on my, you know, how I balance everything and manage my time and how when to engage on LinkedIn and all that stuff. But in terms of the podcast, yeah, that's really where the team comes in. Wouldn't be able, I used to do it all on my own. Um, it's, it's, it's so much harder. It's so much more difficult to look towards the future. Um, the things that I'm not good at is clips. I have not gotten a system down for that yet. Um, and then also, yeah, being ahead with my episodes, I don't, I don't have a system for that yet either. So there's a lot here that I don't have dial in, you know, well, that's what I do. I am a very good at clips. You're <laughs> I, great I, at clips, I dude. Yeah. Cut so many clips and like I tell people like you can give me time codes for clips. If you want me to cut them. But I say, just let me do it. I've been, I've cut over a thousand clips on this podcast in the past uh, 18 months. I have an ear for clips. Mm -hmm. It's just easier. Uh, but like on, when we talked about YouTube previously, um, it's kind of tough because like sometimes I cut a clip, like I need some kind of an intro. And it, that just takes up more work. And so, no, no, it's only spending out fucking hours in a day I can cut. And no, no. I, and it's, it's hard for me to, like, differentiate between a good and a bad clip because I don't know if it's going to be good or bad until I post it. So let's kind of shift over to YouTube. I got yeah. a lot, plenty, plenty for LinkedIn, but let's yeah. shift over to YouTube because you, you sure. told me the biggest mistake people make is that make, they don't make content for YouTube. And mm -hmm. I've been sitting on that one for weeks thinking about that. And look at my content. I go, oh, shit, he's right. I'm making, I'm putting content on YouTube, not YouTube, I'm not making content or YouTube. Yep. So, You're using it as an archive. Yep. Yeah. Break down, break down the difference for me. And like yeah. what difference between on and for YouTube is it's like, yeah, I even tell people it's like, yeah, if I lose all my stuff, my hard drive, guess what? It's all on YouTube. It's storage. <laughs> so, and sometimes it's, it's kind of like storage for me as well. No, it actually, by the way, it's free storage. It's free storage. They're not limiting it's free, you. It's and then free real estate. <laughs> and then dude, if you, if you upload, I know there's going to be like noise happening. I'm sorry about that on my, my dad's weed whacking, but, uh, so, um, yeah, so if you uh, also, if you upload a long form video to YouTube and then you download it after YouTube processes it, it's so much smaller, by the way, just as a little cheat code. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah YouTube, but yes, YouTube will cut that shit down. It's nice, yeah. So I'll send that one to the guest, you know, so it'll be nice, quick and easy. But yeah, so, dude, my freaking, he really has to do the freaking blow. <laughs> dude, it's every day, it's blower. But um, so, so with YouTube, man, yeah. So basically, I have a good case study for this, right? So I had a friend on my podcast. His name's Jack Singleton. He's my trainer, okay? So he trains me. He sends me workouts. He's a bodybuilder. He's on steroids. He talks about it. He's jacked. He's awesome. I, he's, he's, he has a mind for it. He has a master's degree. Like, he understands it. So we did an episode, right? It got 70 views, mostly because we promoted it on our social media, right? Mostly because he has a following on, on, on Instagram, and I've followed on Instagram, right? So I got 70 views probably last year or the year before. Then we did another one, okay? In this one, I did a custom thumbnail 
that was like very specific. I shot a picture just for the thumbnail specifically, just like with like all staged and choreographed. Then I had the title picked out that I ran before, ran by him beforehand. Beforehand, the title is I asked a bodybuilder what steroids he does. And so, you know, that's like, think about that on YouTube. I asked a bodybuilder what steroids what he does. People just want to know like, okay, what did he say? So I got the title. I got the thumbnail. And then the first minute of the video is him talking about this thing that's not a steroid. It's called SARMs. It's this thing that people use as, as like instead of steroids, right? And so he's talking about, and a lot of people use it. So in that community, if you know it, you know it, right? So if you know, then you're going to listen to it because you're like, oh, everybody on TikTok is talking about this, but they're promoting it. But this guy is looking at it the other way, right? So that's one example. The first one got 70 views. The next one got 400 views. So it's just, we're not in the thousands here, folks. We're getting there. I have a thousand subs. We're not that big yet. But just that factor itself, like I can see the retention was better. I can see obviously the views are obvious. So that's my personal example. But if you just look in somebody's YouTube channel, you know, if they're optimizing for it or if they're not. And I thought all my subscribers were gone. I thought I didn't have any more and they were all from 12 years ago. It turns out they're there. I can see it in the stats. I wasn't creating videos, thumbnails, titles, and honestly just content that was good enough for them to click. Because if you think about it, if you have a podcast, you're competing with Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, Burr Kreischer, fucking, uh, 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 you know, uh, every murder mystery. Like you're yep. competing with goddamn killers they see your YouTube video and then they see a fucking world-class comedian son. Who are they clicking on? So that's why like my whole, I'm not saying my shit's great. I'm saying I'm trying, um, but I'll add on to this, right. As the, you know, kind of final piece of this is I talk to a YouTube consultant. Like I talk to a guy who does this for a living. I, my channel doesn't, he wouldn't work with me. He wouldn't work with you. We're not there yet. You got to have five, 10, 15 K subs just to start to work with him. And he's $15,000 just to work with him. But yeah. he spoke, he just, dude, he was like the nice, like just gave me the time of day and I can't thank him more for it. Um, and, and he taught me how to do it. Like he, well, he at least, you know, gave me 30, 40 minutes of pointers, but he said title has to match the thumbnail, right? And then the thumbnail and title need to match the first minute. So you need to good deliver them what they're looking for in the first minute, but then allude to the rest of it, right? So there's no magic formula, dude. If you're trying to drive people to a, to a two-hour anything, it's going to be very difficult if it's not made by a you know yeah if you're not a, uh, 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 yeah a, a film company, right? But but um, but yeah, I mean that's kind of the gist of YouTube, man. Most people like when I sit down with clients, I'm like, what do you, you know, I say, what's your YouTube strategy? And they're like, I don't, I just upload, right? And I get the same amount of views every time, mostly ten views. Well, I, you, you, you do, you do YouTube strategy a little easier for me. Cause well, like, like you said, it's very hard to convince anybody to watch two hours of anything. So it's like, all right, great. Start with shorts, start with shorts. It's easy to get 60 seconds and you, it's fed into an algorithm, a complete different algorithm. I think than main YouTube, my YouTube channel has been very successful. At least I define it as successful, uh, this year, um, strictly through shorts. And I started posting shorts sometime last year, but it's kind of uploading and having a title. Just no, there's no thumbnail. I think a big reason why it's successful because there is no thumbnail. So. Oh I, yeah, they. That's why they do that because they want to give people a chance. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So and a big thing that helps me is AI. Uh, ChatGPT writes the basis for um, title. Now, now this is really cool. Yeah, you should go into this because I was. You should go into this specifically because I'm like I don't care about any of this shit. It doesn't help me. It doesn't get you views. It doesn't do anything. It like, does though. I, yeah, it does. Exactly. So here's the crazy thing. So uh, I started the channel January 2021. So last 2022, excuse me. So last year, uh, posting the videos around June, probably this time last year, I started Keep TikTok going. and then started posting the shorts. I'll put that camera on me. Um, and then from there, it, the, the whole thing just kind of exploded this year. So all of last year, 2022, I had 50,000 views on my YouTube channel. Since then, I have gotten almost 200,000. Wow. And almost, and almost all of these are from shorts. So don't get me wrong. They are slowly, yep. very slowly starting to bleed over into um, no, the I'm gonna, videos. I'm, I'm going to touch on that because I do have something to say about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but also subscribers. So all, yep. of, all of 2022, I think I maybe had 100 subscribers. Maybe. If not a little less. Uh, since then, I am getting maybe three or four a day. Mm -hmm. So this, the growth is very, very slow, but that snowball and that momentum yep. is real. Like it was just, I'm probably getting on average 500 views a short, which is fine. But 
per podcast, I'm getting, you know, five or six shorts on a batch of like 15 or 20, getting 1,500. So it does kind of slow ball, and a big part Mm. of it is the chat. I think it's a chat GBT transcripts I use. Mm. So what I do, um, I transcribe the short as well as the clip. I do the same thing for shorts and clips. I don't know why it doesn't work for clips, but it only works for shorts. Um, You have a template. So have write me a a title, description, and tags, uh, and follow these guidelines for titles, descriptions, and tags. And I put following this transcript. I transcribe the video in Premiere. It's not perfect; doesn't have to be. And it goes in. You know, look for keywords one to three towards the beginning, and then bam, it just filters it out. And if I don't like it, I tweak it, and then somehow it works. And now, is it ChatGPT that makes a difference? Fuck, man, I don't know. But it's definitely helped since I started doing it. Yeah, it's one part of the strategy. Yeah, that, so I did watch a video the other day which made me think a little bit about this where he said, Pete, there's if you look, right, so he would go to channels, uh, certain channels, okay, and he would show you how many views they're getting on shorts. Mm-hmm. And they would be getting millions, tens of millions on shorts, dude, and you'd go to their videos and there would be 2,000 views. Now I think that that's that's a, a that's a video problem, not a shorts problem, right? The problem is though, if you think you're successful from shorts, that's easy, right? It's like that's easy for us to be successful at because to get 500 to 2,000 views on a short, you just need to make one and yeah. do, do a little ChatGPT. And I, I get I get views on my shorts too. I don't use ChatGPT, but I've just been fucking around with thumbnails or for, uh, with uh, hashtags and titles and and that's it, hashtags and titles. Um, yeah. and, and I've had similar results. So, the but I think at the end of the day though, you cannot, if you want videos to get views, you have to focus on videos. Shorts are great. They'll pump up your channel. They'll make it look good, yep. right? They'll get your subs up. But number one, that doesn't mean those people are going to watch your videos and number two pe- people who watch videos watch videos people who watch shorts watch, watch shorts. shorts and people who watch shorts are watching shorts right now people who watch videos are watching videos right now meaning that i watch a short people watch a short on their lunch break people go home and watch videos so they might find you on the short and subscribe but then once they go home and click your video they're like what's this right maybe and so that's why i'm still i love shorts it's great i think tiktok is the place for vertical like i said i'm not there i know it's the best algorithm i know it's the best i've so many podcasters i've seen kill um but i do think that it's a little bit of a like maybe it's just making us feel like we're doing something and, and, and I'll, I have another example I'll add on to this just to take it off YouTube for a second. On Instagram, I posted a, a, a reel. It did 50,000 views and it got 6,000 shares. 6,000 fucking shares, son. That's a lot. No followers. <laughs> I didn't get, I got 10 followers from it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, so, I, have, I, have a, no, I don't have that many views or shares, specifically shares, I don't think, on reels, but I'll have a few. I'll, every now and then I'll get like a few thousand on a reel and nothing. Instagram gives me Yeah, nothing. so and that's why I'm like, albums. is this just a, a, a hamster wheel that we're on where, where the shorts are not really bringing the people? But I will also give you another example, which is my friend Julian Dory, who has the Julian Dory podcast, uh, which used to be called Trend of Fire. Um, yeah, hundreds of thousands on YouTube, probably half a million on TikTok. Um, you know, his shorts don't work on Instagram. They get like 5,000 views. They get 5 million on, on TikTok, yeah. um, which is an interesting concept. But he has told me on my podcast that he spent 24 hours making a 45 second clip. And so editing that clip. And so now that clip gets a million. Yeah. Like you said, they're getting a couple hundred clicks on that link from that, but he's done that consistently for two years and grown his show from zero to a million followers in that time. And so there may be something, there is something to shorts guaranteed, but there's also something to the videos. Um, and so, yeah, man, this is just a fucking balancing act, you know? It is. And, uh, as much as I like the success of the shorts, uh, it's 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 not the success I want. You know, I want the success on No, it feels good. Video. It feels good to wake up in the morning and see that. Like, you scheduled it out, dude. I wake up, I'm like, it's like 9 a.m. or whatever, like a few hours. I try not to check it right away. Yeah. But then I get that dopamine, like, a few hours into my day, and I'm like, oh, let's see how it hit today. I just spun the wheel, dude. It does. It is. It is. It is a bit of a high. I do this. I have. I have. I, have, I do. The, I do this. this I just, reset. 
it's called the cycle. I do the cycle. You know, I open TikTok. Yeah. Oh, likes. I open Instagram. Oh, nothing. I open YouTube. Oh, that's good. Right? Well, it's it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's the cycle of the dopamine hit. And I definitely have that dopamine I eliminated hit. that, uh, you know, I would say to an extent. I mean, I, I download, I literally, this sounds great. It's so normal for me, me now, but people, I understand why people think it's crazy. Like, I download the apps to post and then I delete them. So, oh, that's so smart. I, yeah, so I, I have don't 200. do that because I, I don't have that kind of time, but I should for my mental health. Well, sure. there's no there's no time. It doesn't take time. You're automatically signed in to all those apps. So True. all you all you do is delete it, and you go in the app store and click delete, or then click download, and then you open it and you're signed in. Um, th- yeah, it's there's no it's that's that's not the that's not the reason. Um, but but I do this for me, dude. Like I do it because I can't have them on my phone. Like yeah. I have a girlfriend. I don't want to go on Instagram. Do you know what's on Instagram? Fucking way fucking the in, cr- hottest girls that you've ever seen in your life dude that's not what i want to see there's linkedin influencers who are beautiful women i don't connect with them right i just don't want it like i don't want it as a 24 year old guy like i don't want to go on tiktok and see girls shaking their ass i don't want to go on instagram and see stuff like that you know i just don't like i want dude as a guy right you have impulses you wanted to but yeah. i know that for me i don't want to see that i don't want to get stuck in loops of content right where i'm lo- scrolling and scrolling and now you create content so you're good we create it so that's good right we're using it for good but in terms of the consumption i literally i have such an addictive personality right i literally smoke one cigarette i'm like all right now i'm smoking so I smoke one weed. I'm like, now I'm smoking weed, right? Like it, it's, it's just, I have an addictive personality. So for me, I have to do that. I have them on my phone right now. Like I can check my screen time for today. I have not, I've opened the apps, checked my DMS and that's it. Cause I'm, I'm posting on my story. That's why, that's why I downloaded it today. Cause I'm dropping a song on June 9th and I wanted to post it today. Um, but I will delete it tonight. Like I, that's it. Like it'll just get deleted probably right after this interview. Um, like when I sit down for at the end of the day, like it, they're getting deleted and I'm going to throw on a podcast, you know, it's cleanse. just, but yeah, yeah dude, I, I cannot do that dopamine hamster wheel that everybody's on. Uh, and I'm on it too, dude. I literally write on social media for a living. Like my LinkedIn bro is more than enough dopamine for me. Yeah. 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 And it's, that's, that's a full-time job. It's LinkedIn right there. It, right, literally right. it's my full-time job. Yeah. We are, we are com- <laughs> we're coming towards the end. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, Advice, advice for me. So here's my current situation, right? Like where, where should I focus my attention and in what order? So Will Tarashek, the founder of Willie T Productions, that's where my main focus is in terms of how I make money through podcasting. The podcast, Talking to Tarashek, is the main source of content and the main source of my social media kind of postings. Um, I look for people I genuinely find interesting to talk to and then hopefully, you know, Add them to my network. My audience, I can't tell my audience on the line, but I can tell my audience in, per, in person. People I work with, people I know in real life, they're my mm-hmm. audience and they're fucking amazing. Now, mm-hmm. where should I focus my time? Mostly on the podcast, the content, which I'm still doing and I do a lot of. The podcast, social media, where I'm trying to do what LinkedIn, which we talked about previously, and YouTube thumbnails and try and learn Photoshop and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Or should I focus on getting more clients, more editing people so I can put more money in my pocket? And like, if I can do all three, what order should I do them in? Well, what's more important to you? Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question. Yeah, I that's, mean, the, that's why I have a coach. And it, yeah, well, yeah, and, and step four, find a mentor. Um, I, I mean, yeah. it's just I can't afford a mentor. Well, that's the only thing. Yeah, see, I trade him uh, LinkedIn consulting for, for – uh, so just find a – dude, there's a billion life coaches out there. Just trade one podcast consulting, trust me. I've, I've, I've talked to life coaches on this podcast, and I – I can't. Oh, see don't them. don't have them I on your podcast. I know, but like, I'm I just, saying just I talk, find I talk one to, to trick. Them. Trick. I know. I, I talk to them. It's like I can see through your bullshit, man. Like I have. I have oh no no no, no dude. It's coaches. it's oh you have to you have to find the right one. Yeah, I I trust me. There's only two in my life. I've talked to a hundred. There's two that I've resonated with, and they yeah. both changed my fucking life. But that's the thing, dude. I have a we have a document that has every single thing in my life on that document, and below each thing. Below Bobcast, it has 15 to 20 different questions. And I have to sit and answer those questions and mark my progress on each of the things. When we sat down to do it, I already designed all the goals, right? So, and they may change, right? But but what I'm getting at here is like, there is no answer to your question. It's only dependent on what you want. If you don't know what you want, then that's not an excuse to not decide. So I would say decide, like, what did I do? Like, I decided, dude, I don't promote my podcast on LinkedIn. I don't promote my music on LinkedIn, really. Like, it's sprinkled in there. Why? Not to get plays. 
because it works on LinkedIn. It's to get more views on LinkedIn, right? So yeah. all I did was design a strategy around one thing that was the most important to me, which was build my business. How did I, how do I build? I literally just reversed it. I said, how do I build a business? You need customers. How do you get customers? Social media. How do you get on social media? You choose a platform. How do you choose a platform? Well, which one makes sense to you? Well, LinkedIn seems cool. Okay. How do you get followers on LinkedIn? Well, you got to post. All right. Well, okay, I'm posting, but I have no followers. Oh, you got to get engaged. Well, how do you engage? Well, you got to write comments. Well, how do you get people to see your comments? See how I'm going down? All that came from was making a decision to build my business. So it's just, it's just the decision. Like when you make it, this is what Gary Vee told me, right? This is a perfect note to end on, right? I asked Gary Vee and Rob Deerdeck the same question. I said, how do you balance all these things? How do you balance your passions? They gave me two different answers. Rob Deerdeck said, I have it all designed in a sheet. I can track, I track my life progress through a sheet that was designed, that I've edited and worked with somebody to create, that has my entire life in it, right? He sends an email to his wife, an automatic email every morning with his schedule on it, right? Then you have Gary V, right? He's divorced, you know, dating a model now, right? You know, let's, let's look at the other side of the entrepreneur spectrum. Gary says, hey, some balls are going to drop. Some balls are going to go up. Some things are just going to go up and down that week. If you decide to do all these different things, one thing's going to go up one week and the other thing's going to go down and you just have to be okay with that. Right. So I'll just give you the advice that they gave me, brother. That's a lot to think about. That's should be. It should about. be. This it is your is. life. This well, is serious it, shit. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the question I've been asked myself for weeks with this podcast. What, mm-hmm. what do I want? Well, with my career, the answer is always the same. The career mm-hmm. is just like, well, what do I want in life? Yeah. Right. What do I want in life? What I want in life is to be a dad. You know, and that's not a, that's not the mm. best answer when it comes to my career and podcast. No, that's a good answer. That's a, a really answer. good answer. I mean, it's it's a good answer because like my girlfriend says to me all the time, I don't know anyone who wants to be a father more than you do. It's like, well, thank. Oh you. man, right? Yeah, that's yeah. I don't know anybody who wants to be a mother more than my girlfriend does. You know, so, so hang yeah, on, to, I, hang on exactly. to yours, and she'll hang uh, on to me. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. No, but that's actually perfect. Like the fact that you know that is better than any other information. Nobody's ever going to give you good information, right? Because you're you. They don't know you. They don't know right. the ins and outs. Right. So like I said, I have a coach. I don't base my whole life off his decisions. I disagree with him. I've, we have engagements. We have conversations where I don't take his advice, right? Because I don't think it's right, the right advice. I still got to go by my North star, but if you can like, right, I know I want to be a dad. It's not a priority at all in the slightest. It'll be by the time I'm 30, maybe I'll start thinking about it. Um, that's what I've already established with my partner. Right. Um, so the priority is what I do on a daily basis. And she knows that does that, is that difficult for us? Fuck yeah. It's really hard to do. You know, it's very hard to balance the things, but if you can say that and just say like, this is what I want out of life. Yeah. Now all you, all you do working with a coach is they just put that on a document and then you start fitting everything else into it. Right. It's very, so you can yeah. do it yourself, so right? I'm but think, I'm thinking about it, right? And like, how would I do that? Okay, well, I have a full time job, which is amazing. I am a contractor technically, but mm-hmm. they they always dangle that carrot in front of me. Hey, man, full time better benefits. So yeah, that is what I would really want. So the question is, how can I build my podcast and what I'm doing on my yes, own? Yes, yes, yes. To build yes. to get to that full time, and that's what I'm really trying to figure out. And the answer yep. I'm coming to is promoting the like I had contents down but right? if I go full time the content's gonna be there but now it's like okay I need to do more clearly so it's gonna be like okay promoting LinkedIn keywords SEO so that's what I'm kind of trying to push towards but I'm also trying to balance that with the yep. podcast I'm doing and all the production work I'm doing yeah and then, and yeah. then it comes back to when I don't know what to do hey man I'm just gonna do another podcast until I figure it out yeah I, I, that's a great solution and you know I'll also say the artists that I know who have a million monthly listeners do it full time right yeah they do. And and the people who I know are successful on LinkedIn, some of them will admit it, some of them won't, but they do it full time. And so whatever it is, not that you got to do it full time, but holy shit, you got to do it at least almost full time, part time. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about. All right. All right. So before we go, last question to talk on Tarish podcast always goes to the guests. So Mr. Ryan Sullivan, anything you want to ask me? The time is now. Yeah. Um, are you going to write this down on some kind of paper or document now? So nope. then you could start to answer these questions. Oh man. You know, <laughs> well, yes. You know, uh, I was going, going to go there, dude. That's just what we were talking about. Dude, people tell me to write things down all the time. And I go, listen, man, you can plan things out all you want, but I am more of a doer. I am more of a doer than a planner. 
I just, I do things. I sit back, I edit the podcast, I do all Do you want to know what doing is something you can do, Dan? Please. If you're a do, if you really are, yeah. you can write things down. Because writing things down is not thinking. Now, thinking is an action, too. That book. Thinking is an intentional action. This is my morning pages from today. I can even yeah. read you some of it um, from today. Uh, feeling hopeful, optimistic, and, and ready to tackle the day. Um, there's something about waking up a bit earlier than needed on a Monday morning that really gets the brain going. It feels right. Right. This is not like, this is me just writing. Like I was not supposed to even share this, right? Like this, the, the, it's an action. Like it's not a, whatever your opinion of it is, is wrong. It's just an action. It's just an unbiased objective action. And so that's what writing these things down is. You can have an opinion on yeah, but I'm a doer. That's a fucking opinion, dude. Get out of your head. Write things down. If you really are a doer, you would take what people say and do it. So there you go, bro. You got it. You got the answers. I'm just saying I'm a guy that hates writing things down. Why? Because I'm like you. I'm a doer. So we, as doers, need to do the opposite of what we think we should do. And then we'll get the results that we don't, that we actually want. Because the results we're getting now are from the actions that we thought we should take because we're doers. Nice. Mic drop. I'm out. Done. All right. That's Over. good. All right. All right, Ryan. Anything, anything you want to plug? Uh, your business, podcast, principal, socials, your LinkedIn, of course. Anything you want to plug? My friend, the floor is yours. No, that's it, man. Just, you know, obviously support you, man. I, I, your consistency is there. I, I really just like what you do. Um, we do slightly different things, but it's it's all in the same vein. So I appreciate what you do, man. And I uh, appreciate you having me on a couple times here. Really, really do. I love the time. Uh, we don't get it back. And uh, But yeah, man, I'll just, you know, podcastprinciples.com. It's the site's down. So yeah, just uh, Ryan R. Sullivan on LinkedIn. Site's coming back up next week. Brand new website, uh, sullybop.com for all rap, hip hop, music, DJing, stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's it. You can Google it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Will Tarashek, T.S. and Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. I just got schooled in my own podcast. <laughs> hey, that is why I had him on. Sometimes, <laughs> hey, sometimes you need to hit the school of hard knocks, someone who pulls no punches. And uh, I'm very grateful that I got punched in the face a few times. But if you want to support the podcast, links down below. Everything there, the link tree is all that. I didn't get to talk about the podcast playlist. I wanted to flush that out. But, hey, that's a conversation for Next another time. day. Because there's, I have actually, I've actually evolved my thinking on that. And we spoke about it a little bit briefly, but uh, I'll, I'll pick you, Brandon, for a quick second afterwards. Uh, but T's and Thomas, no A R A S H U K. Down below, also the GoFundMe. If you got five bucks, support a brother. I do this all for free because that's how things pay off in the end. They keep telling me, keep doing it. It's all going to pay off. Well, that's true. Give it to keep it brother five bucks on the GoFundMe for talking with Tara Chuck. Everything goes um, to food. And then hopefully I can actually afford a coach that's going to tell me to write things down. I can afford a service like Ryan Sullivan's. And then I can afford someone to help me out with social media, even a fucking intern to help me do things. But until then, next week, I don't have a guest for next week yet because I'm actually a few weeks ahead because I was on vacation. Dude, you might have to week. pull one of those moves where you split this in two. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Honestly, I has crossed my mind, split episodes in two for YouTube. But, I've done uh, it. I've done it. Uh, no, I can, I can take a week. I'll find some, actually, I have people in the pipeline, but Good. I just got to schedule it because I do all that shit too because I'm old Tarashuk. And I'll see you. you there. But until then, peace. y'all take care.